Okay, so let's see what you guys think. Question one, what do you think is the mistake in Morocco's reasoning? Uh, nobody chose this question, so it is my question. So let's take a look at Act 2, Scene 7. Act 2, Scene 7 is where Morocco makes his choice. Let's see. He ends up choosing. The gold one. So this is page 197. On the right hand side near the bottom. He looks at the gold one and it says. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. So whoever chooses me, the gold casket, will, shall means will, get what many men desire. And he thinks, oh, that must be Portia, right? Every man wants to win her hand in marriage. Um, right? All the world desires her from the four uh, for the from the four corners of the earth they come to kiss this shrine. A shrine is a religious temple. This mortal breathing saint, some holy person. Uh, and then he keeps talking about how everybody wants to come here. And then he thinks the other two do not make as much sense. Therefore, he chooses gold. And we know that gold is the wrong choice. He opens the casket, next page, and inside is a piece of paper that says, all that glisters is not gold. This sentence is still a famous saying in English today, although today we changed it a little bit. Today we say, all that glitters is not gold. Uh, now you should know that in English, if you have a collective noun and a negation, the negation negates the collective noun. So the meaning of this sentence is not everything that glitters is gold. It's not saying, if you want to negate the whole thing, you would say nothing that glitters. But here it's negating the idea of everything. So it's not everything that glitters is gold. So what do you want to do? Ah,我要做一个，英文里面如果你有一个金的名词，然后你再加一个否定的话，它否定的是金和的概念，不是所有的一切。所以这一句的意思并不是说没有任何闪烁的东西都呃，它意思不是说所有闪烁的东西都不
So gold is sometimes good, but in this case, no. Often have you heard that told, many a man his life has sold, but my outside to behold. So the idea is that just because other men want this thing does not mean it, it must be a good thing. So what is the mistake in Morocco's reasoning? He thinks that uh, Portia is someone that many men want to marry, therefore she must be a great woman. But just because lots of people want it does not mean it's a good thing. And so if uh, apparently Portia's father thinks that if Morocco only wants uh, Portia to be his wife because other men want her also, then like what if everybody else changes their mind? Does that mean Morocco will, would no longer be a good husband? So it's not a good reason to marry Portia. Okay, question two. How would you perform Solanio's quotation or imitation of Shylock at 2, 8, 15 to 22? Okay, let's take a look. 2, 8, 15 to 22. Here, there we go. So, here, Solanio is talking about when uh, Shylock's daughter, Jessica, ran off with Lorenzo. We saw this at the end of last week. Uh, and we didn't see how Shylock reacted. The only way we know his reaction is from Solanio here. But we do remember that uh, after Shylock came home from his meeting with Antonio, he was talking to himself a lot, right? He's talking about his money and how people mistreat him. And then in the middle, he orders Jessica to stay home and close the doors. It's like he was, he was, uh, his direction was scattered in many different places. <laughs> So we know that sometimes he's not very focused. Here, Salanio tells us what happened when Jessica ran off and Shylock discovered this situation. He says, I never heard a passion so confused, so strange, outrageous, and so variable. It changes a lot. As the dog drew an insult, right? He's Even here, he's insulting Shylock as the dog Jew did utter in the streets. Quote, my daughter, oh, my ducats, ducats are money. Oh, my daughter, fled with a Christian, oh, my Christian ducats. Justice, the law, my ducats and my daughter. A sealed bag, two sealed bags of ducats, of double ducats stolen from me by my daughter. And jewels, two stones, Two rich and precious stones. Stone here means jewel, jewel. Stone by my daughter. Justice, find the girl. She hath the stones upon her and the ducats. So first of all, why does Solanio think that this is confused, strange, outrageous? Why is it not expected? Why is it not normal? Remember what happened is Jessica took bags of money and jewels and ran away with Lorenzo. So Shylock loses his daughter, some a lot of money, and some jewels. Are these three things equally important? Some would say that if you lose a daughter, that's much more important than losing your money. But here, according to Solanio, Shylock's reaction is that all three of these things are equally important. He doesn't differentiate between losing his daughter, losing his ducats, and losing his jewel. In fact, 
he spends more time talking about the money than he does about his daughter. Right, he mentions his daughter once, twice, three times, four times, five times. But in the last three times, he's simply saying that my daughter stole my money. Whereas he talks about his money once, twice, three times, four times, his jewels, uh, five times. It seems like he's more focused on his money than his own daughter. And especially here, right? My daughter fled with the Christian. Oh, my Christian duckets. Suddenly his daughter becomes his money. So it does, from the point of view of like family, it does seem kind of confused. So the question here, on stage, how would you perform this part? In other words, how would you treat this part? Would you do it seriously, straightforward? Or maybe Solano is mocking Shylock and this part is exaggerated, is more dramatic than it really was. What do you think? Should this be serious or mocking? I think in actual performance, uh, whichever one the actor does, the scene would still make sense because the words themselves are already a kind of mocking, a kind of satire, if I'll see. But if you really want to emphasize the Christian discrimination against Shylock, then maybe you would want to make Solanio more mocking and um, unkind and mean. So like when I was reading this, just now, I was reading it pretty straightforward. But maybe on stage, you would add some actions like to make Shylock seem like he's losing his mind, maybe make him run left and right, run in circles, um, as if he, um, he really is very confused. And that would add to the power of, um, actually, scene five, uh, question five. We're going to get to this later when we talk about Shylock and revenge. OK, question three. So finally, uh, one group chose this question. Why did Antonio weep when lending money to Bassanio? Um, so let's take a look at this, 2846. Ah, there we go. So um, here, Celerio is talking about what happened when Antonio gave Bassanio the money and sent him off to Belmont. We don't see this scene on stage. Bassanio and Antonio don't perform the scene. We only know what happened through the eyes of Celerio. Um, he says, I saw Bassanio and Antonio part. This means Bassanio parted from Antonio. They did not leave together. Bassanio left Antonio. Um, and he describes what they say uh, as they leave, as Bassanio leaves. And then line 46, his eye being big with tears. This is Antonio. Turning his face. He put his hand behind him, and with affection wondrous sensible, he wrung Bassanio's hand, and so they parted. So in modern English, Antonio started crying. He turned away from Bassanio, put his hand out behind him, and shook Bassanio's hand from behind him so that Bassanio would not see him cry. So the question is, why? Why is Antonio crying? So uh, the group that chose this question, they gave a few reasons. One, they're two good friends and they're, they're parting, they're leaving each other. And that's true, but Bassanio is not like 
going very far, right? He's only going across this part of the sea to Belmont. He's not going to war. He's not going to North America. It's very close. So that doesn't seem to be a good enough reason. Another reason that this group gave is because at this point, uh, Antonio already knows that he can't pay back the money. And so if Shylock really does cut a pound of flesh from his body, Antonio is probably going to die. And it says this here at the top of page 199. And for the Jews bond which he has of me, which is, which is the contract, let it not enter in your mind of love. So don't even think about the contract. So when Antonio is telling Bassanio, don't think about it, that means that he himself is thinking about it. So this could be a source of his sadness. Could be. Uh, very interesting, this group gave a third reason. Maybe they are good friends. In fact, they are such good friends that maybe they are more than friends. Maybe Antonio is gay. So think about this. Bassanio borrows money so that he can marry Portia. If Antonio is in love with Bassanio, this would, of course, make him incredibly sad. Uh, and, you know, it could be. It's possible. At the time, they did not really have a way to describe uh, homosexuality, like being gay. In fact, um, in the past, the idea of male friendship was very different from today. Uh, in fact, in terms of human history, the current idea of male friendship is actually quite unusual. In the past, male friends were actually more like female friends are today. Close, uh, very close emotionally, physically, um, there's not really like a separation uh, between friends. So it could be hard to tell the difference between good friends and lovers. Uh, and in fact, ideally, there should be no difference, right? Two lovers should be very good friends. So it's also possible. And this would also maybe help explain why Antonio is so sad at the beginning of the play. Maybe he's sad because he's gay and he loves his best friend, but his best friend doesn't love him back. Who knows? Question four. What is the mistake in Aragon's reason? So Morocco is the first person who tries to marry Portia. He chose gold, he chose rock. Aragon is the second person. He chooses silver. And let's see what's wrong with his reasoning. 2919. Uh, still on page 199. Uh, when he sees the gold casket and it says, Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. He understands the problem with this logic. This is line 25. What many men desire, that many may be meant by the full multitude that choose by show. So yes, just because many people want it does not mean it is good. Maybe those many people are all idiots who choose only by the outward appearance by show not learning more than the fond eye doth teach. Fond means foolish. In this sense, in modern English, fond means uh, to like as a verb. Uh, not learning more than the fond eye doth teach, which prize not to the interior. So yes, maybe most people only look at the outward appearance and they don't really care about what's inside. So he doesn't choose gold. Instead, he chooses silver. This is what silver says. Who chooseth, this is line 36. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. 
So not more than he deserves, not less than he deserves. Whoever chooses silver will get exactly as much as he deserves. And then he says, I will assume desert. This word is not desert, it was a Samo. This is the noun of deserve. If you deserve something, that something is your desert. <laughs> so he assumed me here means take on. He takes on this. In other words, he thinks that he deserves Portia. But he chooses wrong. Uh, and so he opens the casket and there's another piece of paper inside. It says, this is page 200. It says, uh, does it say anything important? Okay, so the line 66, some there be that shadows kiss. So some kiss, some people kiss shadows. Some have but a shadow's bliss. Some people only have a, the shadow of happiness. There be fools alive, I wis. I wis means I know. Silvered o'er, and so was this. So they have they cover themselves in silver, which means that they cover themselves with more than they deserve. And this is the same. You think you deserve Korsha, but you don't. So what is the fault in his reasoning? Why, why, like he says, I deserve Korsha, but he doesn't. Why not? One group chose this question. Uh, and they think that it's because um, if you feel like you deserve a person, then you may not try hard to take care of them, to be a good husband. Uh, if you feel like you deserve something, you might not work hard for it. You might not take care of it. In Chinese, we call, or in English, we call this taking it for granted. So perhaps Portia's father is thinking, if someone thinks they deserve my daughter, they may not take care of my daughter, may not keep her happy. And yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's take a short break and we'll talk about today's most popular question, question five, when we come back.
Okay, let's look at question five. Uh, please close the back door for me. Thank you. Do you think Shadok's argument for revenge makes sense? Act three, scene one. This is the most famous part of this play. If you talk to somebody and they say that they have memorized part of this play, they have probably memorized this part. In Shakespearean drama, we call this kind of thing a soliloquy in Chinese, Dubai. But there, in English, there are two words for when somebody talks alone. One word is monologue. If you look at this word, mono means one, log means words. So monologue is somebody talking alone. This is not a monologue because a monologue is talking to somebody. There's another person on stage and the first person is saying a lot of stuff to the other person. This is not that. Shylock is talking to himself. And this kind of thing we call a soliloquy. Now, again, if you look at this word, soul means one, and loquy means talk. So he's talking alone. Soliloquy. No, soliloquy. Okay, Microsoft is not very good with Shakespeare. Um, so this is the most famous soliloquy from uh, the Merchant of Venice. So let's take a look. Salerio asks him, what, what good does this pound of flesh do you? Like we saw last week, Shylock himself told Antonio, a pound of human flesh is not very valuable. So here Salerio is asking, why do you insist on getting a pound of flesh from Antonio. What good does it do you? And Shylock says, to bait fish with all, with all means to use with this. In other words, nothing. He's being sarcastic. The most I can do with this is to use as bait when I go fishing. Which means it's useless. So the first line is answering Solerio, but really what he's doing is talking to himself, talking to the audience. He's doing much more than just answering a question. If it will feed nothing else, it will feed my revenge. He has disgraced me, which means like uh, made me look foolish, made me look. Shame, shameful, and hindered me half a million. He has prevented me from earning half a million ducats. Laughed at my losses, mocked at my gains, scorned my nation. Nation here means race. So insulted the fact that I'm Jewish. Thwarted my bargain, so prevented me from getting the bargain. Cooled my friends. Heated mine enemies. So made my friends less supportive of me and made my enemies more passionate against me. And what's his reason? I am a Jew. Has not a Jew eyes? Has not a Jew hands, organs, Dimensions, dimensions here means size, a, a, a size, an actual physical body. Senses, affections, affections means emotions, passions. Fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means. Means here means way, a way of healing. Warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? Prick means like to puncture the skin with something sharp. 
If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? Uh, in modern English, you would say take revenge. If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. So if all of the other things are exactly the same between Christian and Jew, then why would this last point about revenge be different? If a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge. Uh, so here, line 65, uh, the uh, footnote explains that this sentence, what is his humility, means um, Because he's comparing Christian and Jew, right? So we know that when a Christian is offended, they're supposed to forgive their enemies. And that is called humility or mercy. So here he's saying, so what is the Jewish version of humility? Revenge. Right, because Jewish people are not expected to always forgive their enemies. If a Christian wrong a Jew, what should his sufferance be by Christian example? Why revenge? This why is not asking a question. It's an interjection. Um, so in this sentence, he says, by Christian example. So by the example set by Christian people. So here he's not talking about religious ideas. He's talking about everyday Christian people. What should his sufferance be? How should he take it? How should he respond? Well, if you look at actual people who call themselves Christians, they respond with revenge. And so I shall do the same. The villainy you teach me, I will execute. So the way that you treat me, I will return to you. And it shall go hard, but I will better the instruction. So even though you will suffer, I will make sure that you learn. So back to the question, what is Shylock's argument for revenge? First of all, that I'm not a Christian. So I don't have to forgive you if you mistreat. Secondly, even for actual Christian people, they also take revenge. So even if you want me to be a so-called good Christian, if you look at the actual good Christian people, they also take revenge. So I should also take revenge. So like this question was very popular today. I talked with a lot of groups about this question. And most groups pointed out the basic idea of equality. Shylock should be treated the same as everyone else, but he's not. And so this is the reason that he wants to take revenge. But that's just a feeling. Should he actually take revenge? Uh, some groups pointed out that his religion does not prevent him from taking revenge. Some groups pointed out that he has a good legal reason to take revenge. Antonio signed the contract, so it should be a legal procedure. Uh, but the last reason, as we just saw, is that even when Christians want him to be a good Christian, what he sees is people being bad Christians, taking revenge, discriminating against Jewish people. So if you want him to be what you call a good Christian, that means that Shylock should take revenge. Does that make sense? I think it does. He's, he's basically saying, if you don't follow your own religion, why should I follow your religion? And that logic doesn't make sense. 
Okay, so for these five questions, uh, do you have questions? Okay, if not, uh, for next week, please finish the play. About the one. Um, let's see. So for next week, start from Act 4 and then read to the end of Act 5, which is the last of the play. Next week, I will pass out the second play, Much Ado About Nothing. And I will also introduce that play. And the week after that, we're going to watch the movie version which I am very excited about because I have not seen it before. Uh, apparently, it stars a lot of very famous people, so it should be fun. Okay, so let's take a look at Act 4, Scene 1. This is page 208. So this is in the courtroom. Antonio has not been able to return Shylock's money. Shylock uh, therefore takes Antonio to court to force Antonio to pay the penalty. And the penalty is, of course, one pound of flesh. So this is the lawsuit. Uh, now, in those days, there wasn't really a separate court. The leader of the place served as a judge. Uh, and so this is, I think, in Venice. So the judge is the Duke of Venice, when he is the country. Enter the Duke. Magnificos just means important people. Antonio, Bassanio, Salerio, and Gratiano with others. The judges take their places. Duke. What? Is Antonio here? Again, what does not mean anything. It's just an interjection. Is Antonio here? Antonio. Ready, so please your grace. So please your grace just means if you please. In Chinese, I think we would just translate this as qi. Duke, I am sorry for thee. That's not a very fair thing to say. Before the trial, the Duke is already sorry for Antonio. Does that mean it won't be a fair trial? Thou art come to answer a stony adversary. So you have come to respond to an immovable opponent, someone who will not change his mind. An inhuman wretch, incapable of pity, so here, even the Duke is saying that Shylock is not human. Void and empty from any dram of mercy. A dram is a, a little bit. So the Duke is saying that Shylock does not have even a little bit of mercy. Mercy, I think in Chinese is kuan hong da liang, salvation, forgiveness. Antonio. I have heard your grace has taken great pains to qualify his rigorous course. Qualify means moderate, to lessen, to weaken. Even today, the word qualify or qualifications has this meaning, to make something weaker, to add conditions. So, for example, if you, you're reading like the news and you see the phrase, without qualifications. It does not mean that this person does not have the right qualifications. It means that this is happening without conditions. So qualified, So he has, uh, the Duke has tried very hard to get Shylock to change his mind. But since he stands obdurate, obdurate means like a stone. So again, he's not changing his mind. And that no lawful means can carry me out of his envy's reach. So Antonio does understand that he signed a contract 
So there's no way to use the law to get out of this situation. No lawful means can carry me out of his envy's reach. I do oppose my patience to his fury and am armed to suffer with the quietness of spirit, the very tyranny and rage of his. So since I can't get out of it, all I can do is use my patience to suffer his fury. To oppose A to B means like to bring this against that. So he's comparing himself to Shylock, whereas Shylock is tyrannical, and angry. Antonio says he himself has a quietness of spirit. Duke, go one. So one person go and call the Jew into the court. Salerio, he is ready at the door. He comes, my lord. Enter Shylock. So now that everyone is here, the trial can begin. Duke, make room and let him stand before our face. This hour actually means my. This is called the royal we. Like in, in China, the emperor doesn't say war, right? He says Zun. In the West, the king or the leader does not say I, they say we. So our just means my, but he's the leader. Shylock, the world thinks, and I think so too, that thou but leadest this fashion of thy malice to the last hour of act. And then tis thought, thou show thy mercy and remorse more strange than is thy strange apparent cruelty. So let's translate this. The world thinks, and I also think, that you only pretend to be evil to the very last moment. And then people think that you will show your mercy and your regret. And this would be even stranger than your current strange cruelty. So everyone thinks Shylock is just performing. He wants people to be afraid. He wants Antonio to be afraid. But that at the very last moment, he will let Antonio go. And where thou now exacts the penalty, which is a pound of this poor merchant's flesh, thou wilt not only loose the forfeiture, but touched with human gentleness and love, forgive a moiety of the principal, glancing an eye of pity upon his losses that have of late so huddled on his back. Um, so the first part of this is repeating the same idea. People think that now you insist on taking the penalty from Antonio, which is a pound of his flesh. But people think that instead you will not only let him go from the contract, but moved by human gentleness, which means kindness and love, you will forgive a part of the principal. So people think that you not only will let Antonio go, you will actually forgive part of the, the debt. You will let Antonio return less of the money than you lent him. Okay, so we have to talk about financial words. Uh, so when I borrow money from somebody, that money is called the principal. But when I borrow money, I have to pay back more than I borrow. The extra part, li xi, is called interest. So here, the Duke is saying people hope that Shylock will forgive part of the main money. He's not even saying forgive the interest. He's saying we'll forgive part of the main money, which I think is crazy. Why would Shylock do that? But anyway, uh, the Duke says, he, uh, people think Shylock would do this because Shylock will know and have pity on Antonio because Antonio recently lost so much. So the reason Antonio cannot pay back the money is because 
all of his boats have sunk. Remember at the very beginning of the play, Antonio mentions that he has more than one boat going to more than one place with all of his money and his merchandise. Well, later in the play, every single boat sinks and he loses everything. And that's why he can't pay back Shylock. So the Duke is saying, maybe since Antonio lost everything, you would have mercy on Antonio and let him pay back less. Um, so of late means recently. On his losses that have of late so huddled on his back, these losses are enough to press a royal merchant down and pluck commiseration of his state from brassy bosoms and rough hearts of flint. So Antonio has lost so much that even uh, unemotional people would feel pity for him. Commiserate means to share the misery, to share the pity. Brassy bosoms, a bosom is a chest. So if a chest is made of brass, that means it's not made of flesh. That means that one's heart is not a human heart. And if someone with an iron heart or a stony heart, flint means stone, uh, would still feel pity for Antonio. Even from stubborn Turks and Tartars, never trained to offices of tender courtesy. Even Turkish people, even people from uh, Central Asia, Mongolians basically, uh, would feel pity even though they do not have the religion of Christianity. So the Duke is saying basically everybody would feel pity for Antonio. Why can't you, Shylock, forgive him? We all expect a gentle answer, Jew. So this is a good pun by Shakespeare. We mentioned this last time. Gentle means kind, right? Nice. But it also sounds the same as the word Gentile, which means not Jewish. So when the Duke says, we expect you, Shylock, to give a merciful answer, he's also saying, we expect you to give a Christian answer or, or response. Uh, so do you guys think this will work? When the Duke says this, do you think Shalak would be convinced? Probably not. The Duke is talking about Christian ideas, but Shalak is not a Christian. So this is his response. I have possessed your grace of what I purpose. So I have told you what I'm going to do. And by our holy Sabbath, have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. I have sworn on my religion that I will get what Antonio owes me, including his pound of flesh, the forfeit. Now he says holy Sabbath. The Sabbath is the day of rest, uh, For Christians, that would be Sunday. Sunday is the day of rest. But for Jews, the Sabbath is Saturday. And Jewish people are not supposed to work or do anything important on Saturday. Instead, they have to go to temple. You know, to Tzuri, but. Uh, so Sherlock says, I have sworn on my religion, I will get what Antonio owes me. If you deny it, so if you refuse me, let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom. So if you refuse me what I am owed, you, you will bring danger to your charter and your city's freedom. What is a charter? Uh, if you remember high school history, you might remember that the word charter is translated as uh, Usually, we're, when we mention a charter, we're talking about a company. And so a charter is the right for a company to exist. 
But here we're not talking about a company. We're talking about a city, the city of Venice. A charter is the founding document, like the constitution of an independent city. It's basically the legal right for the city to exist. So if the ruler of the city ignores the charter, it's basically inviting the other cities and countries around to attack and invade because they are no longer a rightful ruler. Charter 就有点像是城那个城邦的宪法啊，所以 Sherlock 意思就是说，如果你连自己宪法不遵守的话，失去了统治正当性，作为国家可能就会入侵你。And that's why you are also risking your city's freedom. You ask me why I rather choose to have a weight of carrion flesh. Carrion flesh means dead flesh. Than to receive three thousand ducats. So、uh, Antonio's friends offered to pay Shylock three thousand ducats to give Antonio more time to repay the rest. And so Shylock is saying. Why don't I take the three thousand ducats? I'll not answer that, but say it is my humor. In Chinese, we say "wo shuo zhe yang." Humor just means attitude, my feeling. I want to. Is it answered? Is that a good response? What if my house be troubled with a rat? And I'd be pleased to give ten thousand ducats to have it banned. So again, Shylock is being sarcastic. What if I find a rat in my house and I'm willing to pay ten thousand ducats for somebody to get rid of the rat? The idea is, it's my house, it's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. So. When the duke is asking why, Shylock says, "Because it's mine, I can make my own decision. I don't have to explain to you." So, what are you answered yet? Tell me, my dear man. Some men there are love not a gaping pig. Some that are mad if they behold a cat. And others, when the bagpipe sings in the nose, cannot contain their urine. So basically, he's saying there are many different kinds of people in the world. For affection, mistress of passion, sways it to the mood of what it likes or loathes. This is saying what somebody likes or hates. Loath means hates. Depends on emotion. Depends on. Passion and mood. So he's saying, I don't have to give a reason. If I feel like it, I can do it because it's fine. Now for your answer. So here now he's going to give the official response to the court. As there is no firm reason to be rendered why he cannot abide a gaping pig. Why he a harmless, necessary cat? Why he a woolen bagpipe? But a force must yield to such inevitable shame as to offend himself, being offended. So can I give no reason? So just like these people cannot explain why they do this, here I also cannot explain why I must do this. Nor I will not. So I cannot explain, and I will not explain. More than a lodged hate and a certain loathing, I bear Antonio, that I follow thus a losing suit against him. So the most I can say is that I hate Antonio so much that I、uh, insist that he、uh, face the consequences of losing this lawsuit. Are you answered? Does that satisfy you? And of course, as Vasanio points out, this is no answer. You have not explained anything. Thou unfeeling man, is a male catching a diary. 
to excuse the current of thy cruelty. So you have not really explained why you are so cruel. Shylock, I am not bound to please thee with my answers. I don't have to satisfy you with my answer. Basanian, do all men kill the things they do not love? Shylock, hates any man the thing he would not kill? So Shylock turns the question around. He's asking, does any man hate what he would not kill? Shylock hates Antonio, therefore he would kill Antonio. That's the logic. Bassanio, every offense is not a hate at first. Shylock, what? Wouldst thou have a serpent sting thee twice? So Bassanio says, like, everyone makes a mistake. You shouldn't be so harsh the first time. But Shylock then says, does that mean you would let a snake bite you twice? So, you know, whatever argument Bassanio has, Shylock has a reason, a response prepared. Antonio, I pray you, think you question with the Jew. You think that you are arguing, you are reasoning with Shylock. You may as well go stand upon the beach and bid the main flood bait his usual height. You might as well go argue with the ocean and tell it not to uh, tell the tide not to rise. You may as well use question with the wolf why he hath made the ewe bleat for the lamb. Okay, so a ewe is a female sheep. To bleat is to make the, the sheep sound. And the lamb is the baby sheep. So when the wolf eats the lamb, the ewe will cry for her child. So here Antonio is saying, you might as well ask the wolf why he ate the lamb. So, like, there's no reasoning with Shylock. You may as well forbid the mountain pines to wag their high tops and to make no noise when they are threatened with the gusts of heaven. You may as well go argue with the mountain pine trees, Zanieling, and tell them you cannot move when the wind blows against you. You may as well do anything most hard as seek to soften that. Then which was harder? His Jewish heart. So compared to all of these other things, the hardest thing to do is to soften his Jewish heart. Therefore, I do beseech you. Beseech means beg. I beg you. Make no more offers. Use no farther means. But with all brief and plain conveniency, let me have judgment and the Jew his will. So here Antonio is saying, nothing is going to change his mind. So don't waste time. Just get it over with. The other told him, brief and plain conveniency. So as convenient as quickly as you can. Let me have judgment. Here meaning the sentence. And the Jew his will. Let the Jew have his will. Give him what he wants. Bassanio says to Shylock, for thy 3,000 ducats, here is six. So Antonio owes you 3,000. I will give you 6,000. Shylock, if every ducat in 6,000 ducats were in six parts and every part a ducat, I would not draw them. So forget about 6,000. If you gave me 36,000 ducats, I would not accept the offer. I would have my bond. I insist on the contract. Duke, how shalt thou hope for mercy, rendering none? If you give no mercy, how would you expect other people to give you mercy? Shylock, 
What judgment shall I dread doing no wrong? If I have done nothing wrong, why do I need mercy? You have among you many a purchased slave, which like your asses and your dogs and mules, you use in abject and in slavish parts because you bought them. So many of you have bought slaves, nuri, which like your asses, ass here means donkey, lizi, and your dogs and mules, mules, luozi. You use in abject and slavish parts. You use these slaves and animals in terrible and slavish ways. You treat them terribly because you bought them. Shall I say to you, let them be free, marry them to your heirs. Why sweat they under burdens? Let their beds be made as soft as yours and let their palates be seasoned with such viands. Palate means tongue. And he, so here he's talking about food and drink. Be seasoned with such viands means, so let their tongues taste Taste such wines. Viands is wine. So he's saying, uh, so like the Duke is saying, have mercy. And Shalak is saying, why? And he's saying, uh, you guys have bought slaves and animals and you treat them terribly because, and you can do that because you bought them. They are yours. What if I say to you, you should let them go free and treat them well, just like you want to be treated? You will answer, the slaves are ours. So if I say that to you, you will say, no, why? Why? They're mine. I don't have to treat them as well as I want to be treated. We're not equal. So do I answer you. The pound of flesh which I demand of him is dearly bought. So it's very expensive. I bought it very expensively. It's mine and I will have it. If you, did, uh, if you deny me, fie upon your law, which means your law is no longer trustworthy. There is no force in the decrees of Venice. So if you refuse what the law says I should have, then none of your laws will have any force. I stand for judgment. Answer, shall I have it? So up to this point, Sherlock is making a lot of sense. Right? We both signed a contract. I now own that part of Antonio. There is no reason or law in the world that can prevent me from having it. And if you try to prevent me from having it illegally, then nobody ever has to obey your laws again. Duke, upon my power, I may dismiss this court. Unless Bellario, a learned doctor, whom I have sent for to determine this, come here today. Okay, so he's saying he has sent somebody to go fetch a guy named Bellario. He is a learned doctor, which means he's somebody who knows a lot. Uh, and I guess it's a doctor of law. So he's very knowledgeable about the law. And so the Duke sent somebody to go get him, bring him here to see if there is another way to get out of this. Salerio. My Lord, here stays without, without means outside. A messenger with letters from the doctor, new come from Padua. Duke. Bring us the letters, call the messenger. Exit one. So somebody leaves the stage to bring the messenger. Basanio, good cheer, Antonio, which means keep your cheer up, keep your uh, morale up. What man? Courage yet, so be brave. The Jew shall have my flesh, blood, bones, and all. Ear, ear means before. Ear thou shalt lose for me one drop of blood. So Basanio is saying, 
I was I would rather sacrifice myself for you than let you die because of Shylock. So what were we saying about Antonio being gay? Maybe he, uh, these two do have hope together after all. Antonio, I am a tainted weather of the flock, meetest for death. Okay, so in a flock of animals or a herd of animals, uh, the weakest animal is the earliest to die. So if something is wrong in the environment or something like there's an illness going around, if you look at the weakest animal, as soon as they die, you can tell that something is wrong. So this is what weather means. Weather is the member of the herd that gives a signal that something is wrong. Uh, today, we call this the bellwether. The weakest kind of fruit drops earliest to the ground, and so let me. You cannot better be employed, Bassanio, than to live still, which means to continue to live, and write mine epitaph, to write the inscription on my tomb. Enter Nerissa, dressed like a lawyer's clerk. Okay, very interesting. Do you guys remember who Nerissa is? Nerissa is Portia's maid. Portia, the sinner. Enter Nerissa dressed like a lawyer's clerk. So something strange is going on. What's going to happen? Duke, came you from Padua, from Bellario? Nerissa, from both, my lord. Bellario greets your grace. She presents a letter. Sherlock whets his knife on his shoe. To whet a knife means to make a knife sharper. He's preparing his knife to cut into Antonio. Asanio, why dost thou whet thy knife so earnestly? Come on, Modal. Sherlock. To cut the forfeiture from that bankrupt there. I'm going to cut what I am owed from that person over there, Antonio. Uh, and this is the chance for Shakespeare to make another joke because Shylock is whetting his knife on his shoe. So Gratiano can say, not on thy soul, but on thy soul, harsh Jew. Thou makes thy knife keen. Soul is the bottom of a shoe, shedi. So he's saying, uh, you are not using your shoe, you're using your soul to sharpen your knife. In other words, if you use this knife, you are giving up your soul. If you really cut into Antonio, you are damning yourself to hell. But no metal can, no, not the hangman's axe, bear half the keenness of thy sharp envy. So no knife is as sharp as your envy. Can no prayers pierce thee? So uh, can none of us change your mind? Sherlock, no, none that thou hast wit enough to make. None of you can say anything that will change my mind. Uh, and then Gratiano goes on to insult Shylock, etc. Okay, uh, let's stop here. Please finish the play before next week. <laughs>